Hello dear YouTubers. Uh, yeah, today I want to talk to you about whatever this doomsday prophet. Let's see, let's, let's start with that. Yeah, well, uh, there's this guy who's supposed to be a Christian leader. Uh, he's professing that May 21st, 6 p.m., everything is going to end, right? Well, this is a ridiculous claim. Because how he calculates the time is because of seven days later, God will destroy the earth, right? Something like that in Bible, like in Genesis 17, verse 4. I mean, Genesis 7, verse 4. Um, well, if, if God is going to destroy the earth in seven days, and which might be true, and let's just say that today, the May 21st, 6 p.m., is the starting time of the 7,000-year mark, right? But you don't know the, the day of seven, the seventh day, you know, it's, it's the whole day long. It's another thousand years. So from this today and another thousand years in this p time period could be the end time, not, not the starting time. What if God decides to come in the midday of, you know, what if it comes in, in between of this thousand year time, huh? Then the calculation is all wrong, right? And what if he comes in in the morning time? Then the morning time could be anywhere from, I guess, 100 years to 200 years. You never know. And you never know when, what if God decides to come at the end of the seventh day, which is like 900 or 99 years, right? What if he does that? Jesus clearly says, Jesus even knew, like he could have done all the calculation too. Jesus knew the Bible. And Jesus could have done all the calculation when he was on earth. Okay, it looks like about 7,000 years. You know, he could have done the thing, but Jesus even said that no man knoweth the time, nor the hour. And this guy is saying, oh, well, I know the exact time and 6 p.m. the hour. Well, come on, listen to the Bible. What does Jesus say about this? No man knoweth the hour, nor the time. Only the Father knows. Not even Jesus knew the time, because only the Father knows. You know, Father decides when he's gonna come, you know. Okay, you, you could be right about that. The seventh day, you know, God's gonna come, which is another period of thousand years. You never know when he's gonna come. He might come early, he might come late. So that's why we have to be always be prepared. And God wants to talk about with this subject, you know, about your sin. Okay, so there's uh, many people like, you know, Christians who sin, right? And... If they do not have the heart for God, they'll continue sinning the same thing. Because their idol is that thing that they're sinning with. And they're not listening to God and they're not being obedient to the truth. Right? So these people, even though they say, I know Jesus, I know Jesus. Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice evil. Right? You who practice lawlessness. Right? That's what Jesus said. So you have to keep in mind that, yes, you do have to keep yourself clean and pure and following after God. But sometimes, you know, Christians, even though they follow God hard, you know, because of lack of praying and because of lack of dedication, they might dwindle and then fall, in, fall into sin, right? But then what do you do when you fall into sin? If you have the true heart of God, you get back up and keep on continuing walk, walk, your, your walk with God. You have, to, you have to, you know, ask for forgiveness and confess your sins before God in your prayer time because our daily prayer goes, forgive us, forgive, forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. What if somebody, and Jesus said this, no offenses can ever be, you know, a person cannot live without an offense because offense will happen either or not. Whatever they try, it's going to happen, right? And what if an offense comes? What are you going to do? Are you going to get angry and then sin? And then get pissed off? And then fall away? No. We have to always forgive others. Forgive those who sinned against us. Forgive them. Just forgive and forget. The offenses could be great. And it could ruin your day. But the only one who is giving that, that offense, that person of power is you. You have to free your own self by forgiving them. Jesus says, forgive them. What, seven times? No, seven times, 70 times. 409 times? You mean greater than 409 times because you sinned more than 490 times and Jesus 
Father, the Holy Spirit forgave everything that you've done. Right? More than 490 times. You ask for forgiveness, you sin again. And then you, you, you repent and then you sin a new thing. And then you, you ask for forgiveness. And then you keep on walking and then you sin again. You, you sin basically every day. And you, you know, like one year is 365 days. You live more than one year. So you sin more than 490 times. So that's not what Jesus means. Like just forgive only 490 times. No, greater. You have to forgive more than 490 times because God forgives you more than 490 times. How can you be unrighteous and not forgive others, right? So uh, keep that part, you know, forgive others. And if you sin, you sin. Don't don't be like, don't be condemning yourself, beating yourself up. Say, oh, I'm no longer worthy. Well, we are we are unworthy to receive anything in the first place. We're like trash. Our righteousness works are like rags, filthy rags before God. Because you think you're righteous, but then if God examines you with God's eyes, you have sinned so much, so much throughout the day. So it cannot be our perfect works. What if you just said something out of a little bit of anger and thus hate? You know, and God says God sees this as a sin, right? What if like that? You know, then you're not righteous no more. You're unrighteous, right? So what, what, what does God mean? God means, you know, He looks at your heart and you cannot deceive God with your heart. God knows your thoughts. God knows your intentions. God knows your heart. So we have to be as humble as possible, lowly as possible. Just push her down to the lowest position you can ever ha have because God will not despise a contrite and pure and hum humble heart. He will not despise a poor in spirit, a, a humble person. He will not despise it. He will love that person, right? And he, a greater goes, a greater grace goes to the humble. And we must keep ourselves humble to receive this grace, which is the help of God, you know, and the mercy of God by being merciful unto others as well. Be merciful to them. If you're not merciful to others, then God's not going to be merciful to you either, right? So be merciful unto others as much as possible. And when you've done sin, then what do you have to do? You have to keep on coming back, get back up, go back again. And if you sin again, the same thing, well, you have to check your heart first. Check your heart. And by checking your heart, you got to read the Bible. What is going on with you? What is wrong with you? Go pray. Go pray hour, two hour, as long as God starts answering your prayers, okay? Ask for strength. As for wisdom, as for holiness, righteousness, do everything you can. We are like filthy rags before God with our works, right? No man, no man is perfect. 100%, you bring me the best Christian in the world, the most holiest guy in the world, you bring me, you bring him to me, and, you know, God can find fault. Okay, God's going to find something wrong about this person. Job was the most righteous man at this time. Well, he wasn't righteous after all, after going through all that, right? You know? So, because he thought he was so righteous. You know, that little pride. So, you have to first know that we cannot be perfect. Even though there might be born again, Holy Spirit filled, you, you, you no longer, you, you still live in your flesh. You're still living in your flesh. Your flesh is going to sin and rebel against you sometime because you do not pray 100% all the time. You don't pray no 3-4 hours a day all the time, do you? No, no, right? You don't pray in tongues all the time. You don't read the Bible all the time. How can you be perfect? You don't go evangelizing all the time. How can you be 100% perfect? The 100% foolproof theory, you have to be 100% clean. You have to be 100% clean to enter into heaven. No, no. God looks at your heart. Is your heart for God or is your heart not for God? If your heart is for God, then the works will follow. If you do not have works, that shows something that your heart is not right with God, right? If you do not have works, then your heart is not perfect with God. So, but if you have, if you have works and sometimes a mistake in a sin, a mistake in sin, then, then, then you can get back up and then keep on walking and follow after God, God's heart instead of following after the world. But if you're, if you don't have the works, in the holiness, righteousness, you throughout the day you don't have any of this. And something's wrong with your heart. You need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit fully with the, with the power of God. You know, because people ask Jesus, then who, who can be saved then if, if something requires perfectness? And Jesus clearly says, with man, 
is impossible, but with God, everything is possible, right? With God, it's possible. That means you must, you know, have a relationship with God. Because you have to be with God, it's, then you can possibly go into heaven. And it's by the blood of Jesus Christ, right? First, by washing us with the blood of Jesus Christ, our sins and our dirty filthiness with the blood of Jesus Christ, wash first, and then with the help of the Holy Spirit, leading of the Holy Spirit, you keep on following God because your heart genuine, genuinely wants God more than anything else because you first love God with all your heart, soul, and body, and mind, strength, whatever. And you have to follow God with all that. And in the meantime, while you're following, walking God, some offenses might come and you fall and some stuff might come and you fall in sin. Right, or some demons attract you, you know, or demons lead you away or somewhere. And you have uh, the blood of Jesus Christ to get washed again as you daily repent of your sins. Whatever it is, you know, by the word of God, your standard should be the word of God. Your sins must be the word of God. So you have to look at the mirror and check yourself. Oh, well, I, my heart is not this clean, okay? I have to be clean, okay? Oh, I have to not sin. Oh, I have to do not this. Okay, so forgive me, God, and make me perfect. Make me like Jesus. Make me like Jesus as, as how he walks blameless. Make me this way, Holy Spirit. Make me this way, Jesus. Make me this way, Father in heaven. Please strengthen me. Strengthen my you know, belief. And when I fall, I know that I can go back to Jesus Christ and be strengthened again and be cleansed again and do not go into those things. You have to strive to enter the narrow gate. You have to strive. That means you have to put a lot of effort. You have to strive to get into the narrow gate. Without the striving, what are you going to think, huh? You're going to just go to enter heaven just because you, you, you think you, you're saved? No. You have to strive. That means you have to put a lot of work. Faith requires work. Because faith without works is dead. That means you have to, you have to keep on trying. When you've fallen, what are you going to do? Fall and fall, fall, fall again and then just go into hell? Or what are you going to do? Get back up and keep on going. You have to get back up and then strive again. Go again. Because it's your heart that shows that whether, whether or not you, know, you will have the works or not. And if you strive enough, you will have the works. Because those who put in the effort and work long enough, they'll have victory. But those who don't even do the work and don't even strive anything, then you, you better check your heart. And I don't know. I, I'm not the one who's sending you to hell. I'm not the one who's sending you to heaven. I have to face judge too. So everybody else is one and one with God. It's not the world. It's not somebody next to you. It's, 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 don't, don't depend on these people who's next to you, who's in church, who's leading you. Don't depend on these people. It's between you and God alone. It's not the parents. They're not going to benefit you to go to heaven. It's not your brother, sister, your, your brother in Christ, sister in Christ. They're not the ones who are going to lead you to heaven. You get yourself with God, yourself, in your own time. Don't depend on these Bible studies. You know, these. it's great. It's great. It's great to learn, right? But don't depend on these people because you cannot trust man, but only trust God. Because someday, man, you know, even though they might be super religious, super righteous and stuff, they may sometimes fall and that may hinder you from, you know, getting getting to heaven. A lot of people, oh, well, my pastor, you know, he, he did something so bad. Well, you should have been praying for your pastor instead of blaming him for his fall. And blaming him for that, that's, that's the reason why you fall. No, let no man have power over your own salvation. You get yourself straight with God, alone with God. And this is the, this is seriously... You know what you have to do. Trust in no man, only in God you trust. Because men, they'll fall. Me. You, you, you don't know. You know I might not. I'm not. I'm not perfect at all. You know, I'm like, I'm, I'm like a trash before God. I'm like trash before God. Ah, uh, me, me, you right here. I'm like trash before God. Trust me. I, I sin. Yeah, I sin and I fall sometimes. You know. But does it does it mean that you know I'm not saved? No, I keep on striving to get through the narrow gate, you get back up. Because no man is perfect. And every offense, you know, Jesus says, offenses will come. 
offenses will come, yes. And you have to you have to withstand these offenses. A lot of offenses come to me, a lot. A lot of people tempt me on YouTube and whatever. A lot of things. A lot of devil the devil and demons they, they try to attack me every day. You know, a lot. Even if I don't pray one day, then they attack me through dreams, whatever, everything, you know. It's just it's just, it's just this crazy battlefield, you know, I'm fighting. And you have to pray for me too, but I can't depend on your prayers alone. I have to depend on my own relationship with God every day. And that's what we must all do. We must all do this. And a lot of people try to evangelize, you know, evangelizing, you know, you're a bigger threat to the enemy. And devil is going to do everything to crack you down somewhere. And, you know, you're bound to fall sometimes if you don't pray, right? And don't read the Bible and don't follow God's way, you're bound to fall. So, what, what are you going to do? Give up? Oh, I'm no, I'm no longer worthy. I'm no longer worthy. Oh, how can God use this dirty vessel? Oh, I, I can't do any works anymore. I give up evangelizing. I give up. I give up. I give up. Then you're defeated, enemy. You're defeated by the enemy. That's what exactly Satan wants you to give up. That's what he wants. He wants to push you hard enough so that you won't stand anymore. The devil wants to push you hard and get you down on the ground, dig deep in a hole. And you so, so much that he don't want you to get up anymore. But what do you got to do? Kick the devil, cast the devil out in Jesus' name, and continue to walk. And God will bless you. Alright? Jesus bless you. God bless.